What's going on guys? And welcome back to the Honeystead. I was going through all of our jars of tea blends that we have created. We've gone through and picked out some of our absolute favorites that we keep pretty much stocked up here at all times. But this one, somebody asked me about, and they asked about the tea that I brewed up the other day in one of my videos and the pure, the color of it was just absolutely phenomenal. I'm gonna go ahead and plan on brewing up a good bit of this today because I do need it. But because this jar is getting close to being empty, I figured I'm gonna take you guys with me and we're gonna, we're gonna blend it up and we're gonna talk about all the goodness that it has in it and you guys are you guys are absolutely welcome to uh, to take this and make this and name it something of your own. Heart and Blood Tea is really not a fancy name at all. I think it was just one of those moments where my mom and I are like, what do we call it? It's good for your heart, it's good for the blood, that's what we're naming it. But we do like to name things kind of fun and creative. Um, so we might have to come up with a different name but for right now, this will stay. So I'm gonna start pulling some of these jars and we're gonna talk about what is in it and how it's beneficial for your cardiovascular system. start with two cups of stinging nettle and the reason that I have picked stinging nettle for this this tea is because it's overall what it what it offers it's not only uh, extremely nourishing for your your overall body but it is rich in iron magnesium potassium calcium and is very vital for building healthy blood healthy bone supporting your your joint health and even your skin and it's extremely mineralizing and one of our absolute favorites to add into the majority of our teas i also use seeing nettle as an antihistamine when my allergies are starting to go haywire but it's also an anti-inflammatory and it's very good for your kidneys as well now, contraindications, it doesn't have any side effects, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. But again, I want everyone to do their own research on all the herbs that I am sharing and make sure that your body, that yourself, you are compatible with these herbs. Um, and by doing your own research, it's only gonna make you a better herbalist, so go for it. But yes, yeah, stinging nettles is a very good, a good base to add to this tea blend. So I am doing two cups of stinging nettles and it looks like I am due to get some more pretty soon. Next we're going to add a half a cup of hibiscus. Not only is it beautiful to add into the tea and when it brews it's just going to have this really rich red color, but hibiscus is packed full of antioxidants and very supportive when it comes to fighting against those free radicals, fighting against the, the molecules that could in turn damage your cells, which then could turn into disease and, and cancer. Then I'm gonna add a half a cup of the hawthorn leaf and flower. Now I know that the berry is more traditionally used. Um, we do have the berry in a tincture form. I think that the berry works fine in a tincture form. I have the leaf and the flower, and so I figured let's go ahead and, and add it into this tea, since this tea is specifically for your cardiovascular and, and your blood, so your heart and your blood. Now hawthorn is known to help help tone the muscle of your heart. I mean, your heart, this is the main muscle that we have in our body and we need to nourish it. We need to take care of it because, well, you don't wanna know what happens if you don't take care of your heart, but it helps tone the muscle in your heart. It also helps with your oxygen intake and it energizes the cells in your heart as well as dilating the vessels to your extremities, which is then going to take some of the stress off of your heart because it's gonna help properly circulate that blood throughout your system. However, I will tell you that if you are taking any cardiovascular medication, I would do your research because this could potentially increase whatever medication that, that you are on, it could enhance it. So please do your research. This might not be for everybody, but for me, this works perfect.
If you hear gunshots, don't worry. <laughs> it's just my, my husband and my son and they're target practicing. Um, you know, I was trying to pause this video and, and record it when they stopped, but well, this is my life and welcome. So, so don't mind them. Um, they're just doing a little target practicing. It sounds, it sounds like my husband. Okay. Anyways, we're going to add a half a cup of rose hips. Okay. Maybe a half a cup and a pinch and I'm going to kind of break them up a little bit this time. Um, I didn't last time and yeah, I'm just going to, I'm just going to break them up a little bit. I think it's a little easier to hold the bowl versus setting it on the table. Good enough. I think that will work just fine. Now, let's just make it pretty. Now the rose hips is the, the fruit of the rose plant. We do use the petals in the majority of our teas. One, because it looks beautiful and two, it is just, it's full of love and it's also good for you and everybody could use a little bit of love, but specifically the rose hips are, are known for the ability to strengthen the capillaries in your system, in your body, in your, in your cardiovascular system, as well as um, it's packed full of bioflavonoids and vitamin C. Then I'm gonna add two cups of red raspberry leaf. Now I know raspberry is, it is a little bit astringent. Um, and when you do some reading on it, you're mainly going to find about the benefits of red raspberry leaf for uterine health and as well for pregnancy. But red raspberry does offer many antioxidants as well, very similar to hibiscus. It also has some literature in, in supporting your, your peripheral uh, circulation for your cardiovascular system. It's definitely looking very fluffy. But yes, red raspberry traditionally has a lot more literature for its uses. Uh, for its uses, it doesn't want to come out. Okay, that's fine. We're going to break it all up. But yes, red raspberry is is more commonly known for, for uterine health, but it's not limited to it. It does offer more. I think this tea, this tea is beautiful. Yeah, look at that. I think it's beautiful. I'm gonna go ahead and brew up a, a pot of this so that you guys can see the color what I'm talking about because it is just, it's such a gorgeous tea. Absolutely gorgeous. One of the most asked questions that I receive is where do we get that tea kettle from? And I, I ordered that for my mama. That was a gift um, for, for here up in the apothecary. Uh, but I found it on Amazon and I did put it in our Amazon storefront along with pretty much all the supplies that we have used here. If I can find it on Amazon, that's kind of easier instead of me you know, doing one at a time. Everything's there, all of our books that we use down to our, our stainless steel bowls, measuring cups, our funnels. But I figured that would be just a way easier way to, to be able to help answer and help navigate all those questions that people ask about where I get this or where I get that. It's all there. All the books, all of our supplies, the majority of them, you can find it there.
the wind's starting to pick up outside and I still have a little bit of time that I get to spend up here. So I'm gonna go find a nice cozy spot there on the couch with a good book and this tea, of course, and sit back and enjoy the rest of this beautiful day and what it has to offer. And as always, don't be afraid to get your hands dirty and learn something old. Bye guys. <laughs>